Hey there, everybody. It's Pastor Jason. Welcome to the Daily Devotional. Today, we are reading Acts 15. Now, it's Friday when I record this, so you know what that means if you're a viewer of the channel. That means I'm going to read you the chapter, but I'm going to leave you to answer the questions and interact with the scripture that you want to interact with. I suggest five. I suggest the, what do I learn about God? What do I learn about man? Is there a sin to avoid? Is there a commandment to follow? How we come and we changed? From our other sets of questions, I do enjoy that, you know, what, how does this scripture point to Jesus in some way new? How do I love Jesus more because of that scripture? And what is the Holy Spirit directing me to do? That's kind of that, that fifth question from the other set. So be thinking about those sorts of types of questions, how you're going to interact with the scripture as I read for us Acts 15 after I pray for us. Father, thank you for an opportunity to open your word. May Acts 15 be a rich blessing in our lives. May it institute change in our hearts. We thank you and praise you for your word. What a delicate privilege it is to have it. We thank you and praise you in your name. Amen. All right, here we go. Chapter 15, verse 1. Some men came down from Judea and began teaching the brethren, unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. And when Paul and Barnabas had great dissension and debate with them, the brethren determined that Paul and Barnabas and some others of them should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and the elders concerning this issue. Therefore, being sent on their way by the church, they were passing through both Phoenicia and Samaria, describing in detail the conversion of the Gentiles, and were bringing great joy to all the brethren. And when they arrived at Jerusalem, they were received by the church and the apostles and the elders, and they reported all that God had done with them. But some of the sect of Pharisees who had believed stood up, saying, It is necessary to circumcise them and to direct them to observe the law of Moses. The apostles and the elders came together to look into this matter. After there was much debate, Peter stood up and said to them, Brethren, you know that in the early days God made a choice among you, that by mouth, that by my mouth the Gentiles would hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, who knows the heart, testified to them, giving them the Holy Spirit, just as he also did to us. And he made no distinguish, distinction between us and them, cleansing their heart by faith. Now, therefore, why do you put God to the test by placing upon the neck of the disciples a yoke which neither our fathers nor we have been able to bear? But we believe that we are saved through the grace of the Lord Jesus in the same way as they also are. All the people kept silent, and they were listening to Barnabas and Paul as they were relating what signs and wonders God had done through them among the Gentiles. After they had stopped speaking, James answered, saying, Brethren, listen to me. Simeon has related how God first concerned himself about taking from among the Gentiles a people for his name. With this, the words of the prophets agree, as it is written, After these things I will return, and I will build, rebuild the tabernacle of David which has fallen, and I will rebuild its ruins, and I will restore it so that the rest of mankind may seek the Lord. And all the Gentiles who are called by my name, says the Lord, who makes things known from long ago. Therefore it is my judgment that we do not trouble those who are turning to God from among the Gentiles, but that we write to them that they abstain from things contaminated by idols and from fornication and from what is strangled and from blood. For Moses, from ancient generations, has in every city those who preach him, since he is read in the synagogues every Sabbath. Then it seemed good to the apostles and the elders, with the whole church, to choose men from among them to send to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, Judas, called Barsabbas, and Silas, leading men among the brethren, and they sent this letter by them, the apostles and the brethren who are elders to the brethren in Antioch and Syria and Cilicia 
who are from the Gentiles, greetings. Since you have heard that some of our number to whom we gave no instruction have disturbed you with their words, unsettling your souls, it seemed good to us, having become of one mind, to select men to send to you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men who have risked their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore we have sent Judas and Silas, who themselves will also report the same things by word of mouth. For it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these essentials, that you abstain from things sacrificed to idols, and from blood, and from things strangled, and from fornication. If you keep yourselves free from such things, you will do well. Farewell. So when they were sent away, they went down to Antioch, and having gathered the congregation together, they delivered the letter. When they had read it, they rejoiced because of its encouragement. Judas and Silas, also being prophets uh, themselves, encouraged and strengthened the brethren with a lengthy message. After they had spent time there, they sent away from the brethren in peace to those who had sent them out. They were sent away from the brethren in peace to those who had sent them out. But it seemed good to Silas to remain there. But Paul and Barnabas stayed in Antioch, teaching and preaching with many others also the word of the Lord. After some days, Paul said to Barnabas, Let us return and visit the brethren in every city in which we proclaim the word of the Lord, and see how we are. How they are, excuse me. Barnabas wanted to take John, called Mark, along with them also. But Paul kept insisting that they should not take him along, who had deserted them in Pamphylia, and had not gone with them to the work. And there occurred such a sharp disagreement that they separated from one another, and Barnabas took Mark with him and sailed away to Cyprus. But Paul chose Silas and left by being committed by the brethren to the grace of the Lord. And he was traveling through Syria and Cilicia, strengthening the churches. Well, Acts 15. Uh, don't forget, what do I learn about the Lord? What do I learn about man? Is there a sin to avoid? Is there a commandment to follow? How are we coming away changed? Hopefully you uh, focused in on verse 4 there. Um, they reported all that God had done with them, that God had done with, uh, with people, right? That the Lord is involved in ministry through people. You and me too. Hopefully you focused in on verse 11. That people, that we are saved through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. I found it also interesting, the, the ministry of uh, Barnabas and Mark. Uh, one of our other sets of questions, what, what questions does it bring to mind for us that we should look up? I'm going to look up uh, the ministry of Barnabas and Mark and kind of see where, see if there's any kind of history that... I can dig up about that. And then you've also got um, the fact that what do we learn about man? You know, you got people in ministry can have disagreement. And hopefully it doesn't tear the church apart. Um, having healthy disagreement sometimes is going to happen when you put a group of people together. Even close people like Paul and Barnabas who had been through a lot. So... It's with the grace of the Lord that you can continue to minister. Remember, it's all through his strength. But that's getting away from the things. Like it is, it's Friday. It's up to you to answer some questions. I hope this, the word of the Lord is going to strengthen you today. Be blessed. Be a blessing. I'll see you on Monday.